Hi, my name is Willie Farrell and I'm a senior software engineer in the IBM Developer Skills team. This demo is the seventh in a nine-part series that supplements the DeveloperWorks Live Briefing Architecture, Design, and Construction using the IBM Rational Software Delivery Platform. In this series, you will see the demos that are performed as part of the live presentation of that briefing. In this demo, you will see some of the web services development capabilities provided by Rational Application Developer and Rational Software Architect. Let's start by taking a look at a simple Java class we would like to make available as a web service. Scroll down to make the project that contains this class visible. Expand the Temp Convert Service Project. Expand the Java Resources Source Folder. And expand the Sample Package. Scroll over so we can see the entire name of the class. Convert Temperature Bean is the class we want to make available as a web service. Double click the class to open it in an editor. Double click the Editor tab to expand it. As you can see, this bean has two methods, one to convert Celsius to Fahrenheit and one to convert Fahrenheit to Celsius. There is nothing in here about SOAP or XML or any other aspect of web services. Double click the editor tab to return it to its normal size. Now we can use the web services wizard to walk us through the steps to make this class accessible as a web service. Right click the class, select new, other. Scroll down, expand the Web Services folder, and select Web Service. Click Next. This is the Web Services wizard. There are many pages to this wizard, but most settings can be configured correctly through the use of the slider bars. The top slider bar indicates development and testing of the service. The bottom slider bar indicates development and testing of a client for the service. You can pick the level of support that you wish using the slider bars, from develop, to assemble, to deploy, to install, to start, and to test. We'll move both slider bars to the top position. We also want to monitor the web service, so select that checkbox. As I said before, there are many pages to this wizard, so that you can have fine-grained control of exactly what the wizard will do. But for our purposes, using the slider bars and checking the monitor box will suffice. Click Finish. The wizard will begin its operations. If prompted to enable overwriting of files, click Yes All. The wizard takes a couple of minutes to complete, but think about what it's doing in so short a time. It's creating the WSDL for the service. It's configuring the SOAP listener to be able to access the service. It's installing the service into the test environment server. It's deploying the service, and it's starting the service. Also, it's creating a test client application, which uses a Java proxy, so it has to create that. And it's installing and deploying and starting that client. In addition, it's also creating and starting a monitor process, which we'll take a look at when we test the service. When the wizard is complete, it brings up the test client it created in a browser. Double-click the Browser tab to expand it. The test client is a web application that lets us exercise the operations on the service. The first few shown here are helper methods created on the proxy. The bottom two methods correspond exactly to the methods on convert temperature beam. Click Celsius to Fahrenheit. The Inputs page lets us provide inputs to the service. Click on the text box. Type 0 and click the Invoke button. Notice that a new view popped up on the right. That's why the browser view returned to its normal size. We'll take a look at that view in a moment. Scroll down in the result frame so we can see the result. Now we can see the result of 32, which is the Fahrenheit temperature that corresponds to 0 Celsius. Now let's take a look at that view that popped up. Double click its tab to expand it. Change both of the drop-down boxes you see here from Byte to XML. The left side shows the SOAP request message, and the right side shows the SOAP response message. The TCP IP monitor is quite useful when testing web services, so that you can see the SOAP messages being sent back and forth. The monitor can be used for any TCP IP traffic that you would like to monitor. 
The web services wizard created this monitor for us, but you can create your own in preferences. Now let's go look at some of the other things the wizard created. Double click the TCP IP monitor tab to return it to its normal size. Scroll down in the Project Explorer view. Expand the Web Content folder. Scroll down. Expand the Web INF folder. And expand the WSDL folder. Scroll over. And double click Convert Temperature Bean.WSDL to open it in an editor. Double click the Editor tab to expand it. This is a visual WSDL editor provided to make it easier to create and edit WSDL files. Let's take a look at the actual source. Click the Source tab. Here is the WSDL for the service. It has all of the information needed to use our service. It contains the schema for the types used by the service. It describes the messages, operations, and input and output elements of those operations. And it shows the location information for where the service is deployed. Double-click the Editor tab to return it to its normal size. Now let's look at the proxy that was created. In the Project Explorer view, scroll to the left and scroll down. Expand the Temp Convert Service Client Project. Expand the Java Resources Source folder. Expand the Sample Package. Scroll to the right. Here is the proxy and its helper classes that were created by the Web Services Wizard. The proxy makes using the service quite easy for any Java programmer. The proxy encapsulates the details of XML and SOAP and network invocation so that a Java programmer that wants to invoke the service can merely create an instance of the proxy class and call its methods. Now scroll back to the left and scroll down. Expand the Web Content folder and expand the Sample Convert Temperature Bean Proxy folder. Here we have the web pages that make up the test client created by the wizard. The interesting page is result.jsp, so double click it to open it in an editor. Double click the Editor tab to expand it. This JSP uses the methods of the proxy to invoke operations on the service. Note the JSP useBean tag, which creates an instance of the proxy, and the Java scriptlets that call the methods on the proxy. Now let's tidy up. Double click the Editor tab to return it to its normal size. From the main menu, select File, Close All. This completes the Web Services demo. In this demo, you saw some of the Web Services capabilities of Rational Application Developer and Rational Software Architect.